It's your work is beautiful. It really, it really is. So much, there's a lot of emotionally charged pieces, uh, a lot of, well, here we go. A lot of heartbreaking pieces, especially the, that one right there, that's, that's heavy. It's beautiful. And, uh, and you know, the tawfiq, always. Um, next up is our featured uh, poet for the evening, Jamal C. And Jamal is going to tell us about himself. He is he has been writing for a while. He's of he's he's living in Michigan, but he's of Palestinian descent. And he, you have an Instagram. Uh, oh yeah, at writing to inspire. At, at writing to inspire, oh, yeah. it's a it's a hook on Instagram. So and he'll, you'll tell us a little bit about your poetry and what you do as well before you share some poems. Yeah, absolutely. But before you come up, please just a small reminder about the open mic. Anybody who wants to sign up, please do that. And that will be the next segment. So come on, come on up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm a little hesitant to use a microphone because I have a very naturally loud voice. <laughs> First and foremost, um, I started writing at a young age because I noticed I had an affinity for it. And I always found liberty on paper. No matter what was going on in my life, I could seek salvation, refuge, whatever you want to call it in my work, and I noticed that no matter what goes on in life, no matter how much time passes, one thing has withstood the test of time, and it's always been words. Whether it's religious, whether it's ancient literature, philosophy, and that's what's you know, been able to guide people through varying problems, and one day I hope to be one of the greats that can do that. A little bit more about me, I've published two novels. I published the first one, I think, 19, the second one came shortly after. It was much better than the first one. The first one was, it was bad. <laughs> but you get better while you go. And yes, as A4 mentioned, I have an Instagram page and it's just great to put the work out there and see that it resonates with people. I write about multiple topics, heartache, failure, struggles, anything that's universally human. Because no matter who you are, where you come from, how you pray, you experience being human and it binds us all together in the end. So with that, I will read five poems. Thank you. <clears throat> this first one is entitled, My Apology. I am sorry that we ended, that we couldn't script a lovely finale on our final page, that our tears and our sorrows are covering it instead. But wait, the story is still being written and we do not need to sulk in sorrow. Turn the next page. Don't be afraid. Don't fret over this. Tomorrow will bring newness. Lovers and moments that will cherish you and uphold your worth the way it deserves to be upheld. Tomorrow will collect these tears and fertilize the happiness buried within you. We may not be together, but we can still be happy. We can take the lessons we learned and create something more suited for us. And we're still together in a way, are we not? Trekking through the journey of heartache as we try to piece ourselves back together. I'll see you on the other side someday. And I will not be bitter, nor will I yell mean things across the border as if we are warring nations. I will smile, and so will you. And we won't say anything. The contentedness in our eyes will speak enough. They will express the gratitude we have for the journey we shared. Thank you. <clears throat> this next one is entitled Real Intimacy. I really can't lay down with just anyone. Sex requires more personal intimacy. I can't travel your body without first traveling your mind. I want to build a home in your heart, not in between your legs. I want to hear your thoughts, not your moans. I want to love your compassion, not your soft skin. I want to be the one who loves everything in you, not the one who lays down only to leave in the morning. But when the morning comes, the sunlight flickering through the blinds, the birds chirping atop trees, I will be there, leaning in to kiss your cheek, a soft bed that my lips will never tire of. You will know that my intentions are more than words. They are actions that will be carried out like military orders. 
and my love will be the soldier that only serves you. Thank you. <clears throat> this next one is entitled The Honest Truth. I wrote it in a really impassioned state, as you guys will see. <laughs> yes, there is a muse, <laughs> but no, she's not here, luckily. <laughs> the Honest Truth. I haven't said the words, I love you, but I have given you the space that you require. I have given you the safe atmosphere to openly and endlessly be and express yourself. I have given you pieces of me that I know I may never get back. I have given you hours of my sleep so that I can fill your heart with compassion and tenderness. I have given you the secrets of life that will unlock every door of your potential. My unending devotion and my commitment to your growth. But in case that, has, that hasn't conveyed my feelings clearly, here it is. I love you. All of you. In the spaces between weeks and days. In the laughter exchanged. In the jokes expressed and the hours spent deepening our knowledge of one another. In the way you turn darkness into gold and give my heart a hand to hold. In the way you're able to change my perspectives and push me to improve. I hope to hold your hand and look you in the eyes someday near the Detroit River with the sun shining and birds flying freely overhead as my lips utter, I love you. I hope the depth of my words will seem vaster than the river beside us as I yearn to transform your hope from a desolate barren land into a fertile, bustling valley. Thank you. Multitasking up here trying to hold the mic, you know, I like the paper out of the way. <laughs> This next one is entitled, My Oath to You. And it just really articulates my thoughts about love in general because I feel people think love is a walk in the park and it's really not. I learned that the hard way. Oh, thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you. My Oath to You. Everyone talks about the good days, the excitement, the beautiful memories ahead. And don't get me wrong. There will be plenty of them. But I don't only want your good days. I want all of your days. The days where your hair is frizzy, your face is bare, and you're crying because you're feeling down. The days where you're angry because of a bad day at work and you slam your keys onto the table where I'll be sitting across with watchful eyes and awaiting ears to assure you that everything will be okay. The days where your heart will shatter from all the overwhelming sorrow it bears where your eyes will shower the house with tears as you reminisce on all the things you've lost. I don't only believe in loving you during the sunshine and the rainbows, during the smooth sails with fancy coastal views and fine meals. I believe in loving you through everything, the good, the bad, the painful, the ugly. I'm here for it all. And I wouldn't be worthy of your time if I ran at the first sight of a storm. And even if I drown or get ran over along the way, I'll be placed in the casket with a smile on my face, knowing that I loved you the way you deserved to be loved. That I took each of your inner petals and planted good fortune in them. That I kissed your troubles away and absorbed your heartache. And that I chose you during all of your days and not just your good ones. <clears throat> Thank you. This last one is entitled, All of You. I want to fall in love with you a million times over. I want to love the woman you are now, the fun-loving, spiritual person who transforms me from a sandcastle into a resilient, impenetrable fortress. I want to love the home version of you, who decorates not only the walls with white posters and globes, but who decorates the world with shades of love, compassion, and hints of humor. I want to love the mother that you'll become, my eyes watching joyously as you bounce our child up into the air that collects the love my heart emanates for you. I want to love the 40-year-old you who has gray hairs of wisdom from the great journeys she's embarked on. I want to love the grandmother version of you who teaches our grandchildren the invaluable lessons we all would have loved to have had. I want to love all of the versions that are, that are awaiting their turn to exit the door of your soul. And when they do, I will intimately caress their shoulders and play with their hair 
until their thoughts and beauty fall on to my ever-awaiting spirit, until they can depart knowing that they've received the love they're worthy of. Thank you. Much appreciated. No, thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you.